Today we are looking at an e-bike that doesn't fit any standards. It's big, heavy, long, dual suspension, and I'm not even sure where to start. The frame is exactly the same design as the Polarna M6, and this is a mid-size folder that I really like. It's one of my favorite bikes for New York City. Great for city commuting and does amazingly well off-road, with best performance when it comes to speed and range. But this e-bike? It's on steroids. This is the Damson R5 Pro model. The frame is stretched out, it is long and wide, heavy, but still comes with a folding mechanism. The front fork and light are massive, makes this bike look like a motorcycle. I'm not sure where to classify this model and what is the purpose of this design and why they made it so big. Let me show you how it was delivered and unbox it and after we dive into the specs and test it out and see how it feels and how it rides. Guys, this view is amazing. We are reviewing a new electric bike. Let's close the door, it's getting colder. And this is the box, just got delivered this morning. So this looks like it's a big 26 inch tire utility bike. Let's take it out and uh, assemble it and test it. Here we have in this box uh, air pump, hardware, a bike lock, which is pretty cool. The front headlight. This is uh, quite big. Pedals tools and the charger. We also got uh, a phone holder, uh, a lot of accessories in this box and uh, the bike was packed so well, so many zip ties, it's insane and uh, let's uh, put it together. The motor 750 watts, rear hub drive, standard motor that we see across majority of electric bikes. We have a 48 volt system, 15 amp hour or 720 watt hour battery capacity. Removable and can be charged inside and outside the frame. Let's take a look at the components and quality. It's the same exact frame as the Polarna I review, the M6, M4, but it's just like so much bigger. Massive 26 inch tires, that one has 20. We have here preload adjustment and compression. So a lot of travel here. It's not bodice move, but it's very comfortable. You have adjustability in front so you can adjust the, uh, the level. Look at this massive front axle here for the fork, right? Everything is just like maximized twice. Uh, I'm not sure what's the purpose of this bike, but I took it over construction road and off-road and it feels comfortable those big wheels really dissipate vibration and you don't feel much of the bumps and pretty much I think this bike will go over any terrain we have the mid suspension that's actually very useful and has plenty of travel and dissipate a lot of bumps and vibration and makes the ride comfortable uh, this frame a big battery inside plenty of seat post uh, for taller riders very long tube we have a big rear rack, the frame, look how wide it is, and uh, it's pretty long, it's very stretched out. It doesn't have this beautiful uh, paint job, the frame uh, doesn't have the perfect symmetry, but it's foldable, which can be useful for other people, let's say if you have an RV, if you have a small place, uh, even if you have a bigger house, a bigger garage, I'm sure having this foldability option can be handy. We have hydraulic brakes. I saw the same brakes on the Obata X7 scooter. Very good brakes. It has this uh, carbon fiber finish, but it's not carbon fiber. We have good electronics. So we have the console and uh, the options here the same as the Nami scooter, which is pretty good. I used that uh, on that scooter for a long time and the very comfortable good consoles. Let me turn the bike on so I can show you guys the menu. Good screen. I covered 8 kilometers so far, 8.8 .8, and we have 77% left. So it's heavy. It's a heavy bike and consumes a lot of energy but we'll see. We'll test uh, the range and see how much we can squeeze out of this battery. So if you look here 
the rubber grips uh, are you know nothing fancy here no hardware secured and you can move it easily so you have like cheaper stuff you have uh, a good Shimano shifter hydraulic brakes again a big light so we'll test and see how it does in the evening when it gets darker so to turn uh, on the lights you press this button here and what's cool is even if the bike is off it still works and the light is not super bright but it's like on the lower side the rear light it's quite strong quite powerful and bright but if i press the brakes it does not uh, engage so we don't have uh, active rear brake light so we're outside and it's not super dark here and the rear light it is super bright now you can uh, take a look here at the front light it is not super bright but it's decent has a nice patch and uh, I'm sure if it's completely dark outside you'll see a very nice spot but this is how the light looks like going down all around nothing hidden which I quite don't like it's better to have you know all this wires uh, you know hidden inside but this is not a beautiful bike this is not something that you're gonna go in the city and just commute this is mostly uh, carrying loads going hunting going off-road uh, doing pretty much work so it's a workhorse type of uh, bike so I don't think uh, if you get this bike you'll care about uh, the wires hanging uh, outside but if you have any issues if you need to replace the controller or the battery that'll be easy so there's a convenience there the sprocket aluminum 48 teeth good cranks good pedals good chain and we have turny mid-level shifter very good shifting crisp eight speed cassette everything adjusted properly out of the box overall if you look pretty good components it's it's big it's heavy but uh, we'll check the the range the top speed and see how it feels uh, but uh, overall it looks quite interesting All right charging so we have two amps an hour charger and uh, it feels light and it's not uh, as great quality as other chargers like for example this one let me compare and show you like this guys if you look uh, presentation wise it just looks better and it's heavier but this is uh, my favorite uh, it feels heavier but has a better design and just looks like it's better quality so acceleration is not that fast it's very slow but gradual but once you start pedaling and you use the throttle after like one cycle of pedal turns it just picks up and it goes all the way to 26 27 miles an hour range the test was performed in maximum fifth mode and during the test i noticed if you drop to third speed level or fourth the range increases significantly in the fifth mode the bike is going through the battery really really fast i was able to cover 20.8 miles in range which is acceptable for this size and this weight of a bike i also weigh 210 pounds i have my backpack with the camera gear that's another 15 pounds the motor performs uphill pretty well it picks up speed into the hill and maintains and has pretty good torque and power delivery this model it's set up to have slow acceleration and smooth pickup so it saves battery since this frame it's really heavy but if you shift to the higher gear and slightly pedal from a dead start it helps and picks up fast the suspension is noisy when you go more aggressive off-road but still does well I was able to go over some pretty gnarly terrain and the bike handled well in the higher gear I can say the comfort is good and capable to do trails and more intense off-road regarding the quality we have pretty good parts I like the hydraulic brakes I like the screen the console except the grips that can be easily swapped for like 22 to 25 dollars the battery and the motor are the standard that you see on most of the bikes in this price range this is pretty much a rugged squared industrial design no fancy paint no symmetry that screams appealing it's more of a workhorse and utility bike that has the power and speed you will load it up with heavy cargo it will do the job and you will not care if it gets dinged or scratched this bike will cross areas where a regular commuter will struggle or will not be able to go over for the city there's no reason to own this bike but if you have a farm or a ranch if you go hunting if you need an everyday beater bike then Damson R5 Pro it's a good option it's more cost-effective compared to Ad Motor, Wild Tan or Cobra Pro, but less refined. 
This was the review of the Tamson R5 Pro electric bike. If you guys have any questions, please comment below. Don't forget to like and share this video if this video was informative. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.